know, shopping in a supermarket can be an absolutely amazing and very informative experience. You see so many products, often ones that you didn't even know existed. But there's one thing you may not know about a supermarket, and that is there is a rhyme and a reason for the placement of almost every product you see in the store. This package of Trident Layers chewing gum didn't end up on this aisle and hanging right here by accident. There's a reason for it. And that's because the broker behind the scenes, the one who actually sold the product to the store, had a lot to do with that. And to learn about all of this, and it's pretty doggone amazing, we visited one of the premier food brokers in the New York area, E.A. Berg & Sons. We visited and spoke with their executives, starting with Vice President Michael Berg. We're a full-service food broker. We represent various manufacturers. We act as their sales force. All different classes of trade in the Metro New York market. They use companies like us. It's a cheaper way for them to go to market. It's more cost efficient. Our retail division consists of three divisions. One focused on grocery and drug, both chain and independent. A second handling convenience stores, including mom and pops and bodegas. And a third focusing on specialty food stores. And our team is focused on ensuring distribution, planogram compliance, and selling secondary displays to support promotions and new item introductions. Within our grocery division, we have a team dedicated to handling all resets and surge projects. Our retail department is very effective when dealing with the independent grocery accounts, commonly referred to as white space accounts. We represent some major corporations, CPG companies in the United States, m and Mars, it's called Mars Chocolate, Snickers, Three Musketeers, Twix. And then we do a lot of gummy products, gum products. When I first started working for my dad, who had founded the company, I used to go out and work with distributor salesmen and go with them store to store. And when they would write their orders, because most of the orders in those days were written by the salesmen at store level, they weren't called into the distributor as they are today. So our methodology, we've been able to take across the country with certain manufacturers and it's been very successful and it's an area of huge growth for our company as a result of what we're doing with that model that we developed in Metro New York. Each account can have different positioning of their showing. Each account that you walk into may be a little different than others and some choose what's called a low, bo low boy gondola where the shelving is low and some are high depending upon the type of store you're in. Innovation is constantly happening all throughout a supermarket. In the con confection area, and particularly in the gum category, there's quite a bit of it. New innovation comes out. It may totally change the way the section is set on the shelf because of the new categories coming in, new innovation coming in. So we constantly have to work with the accounts to ensure that new innovation is positioned properly because then it's directed right to the consumer what the product is. The consumer may not know what the new innovation product is, so it may go into a specific category to create space for the consumer to find it. Business is separated in different classes of trade, so I mostly handle the distributor class of trade. Those are the customers that we sell product to, that put product into like convenience stores, independent stores, and that's mostly my role. I cover all the key customers in that category. What's the advantage for a manufacturer to work with this company, EA Bergen Sons? We're a lot different than other companies that are in the industry. We're more hands-on. I feel we're more active, play an active role with the customers. You know, we don't sit back and just manage people and tell them what to do. We're out there rolling up our sleeves and doing the job, you know, handling a lot of the things face to face with all the customers. And we all grew up in the business, so we've called on all sizes of the customers. We know the market and we know what the potential is, so we're able to guide our salespeople to do their job because we know, know everything. We weren't just thrust in and put in a head of a company, you know, because our father put us in the business, so we've kind of gone through the ranks. What we have, we, we call the Man and Van program. Basically, we work in conjunction with the distributors, go into the independent convenience stores, sell a product off the van directly to the retailer on items that they're not currently stocking. We also can bring rack displays into the stores, like this rack, and merchandise it properly for the store to increase their sales. When new items are launched, like this M&M pretzel here, is getting what we call speed to market, getting the vans out into the streets, getting the product from the from the distributor into the stores via our van program. And that's very effective in getting what's called speed to market on new items. Again, manufacturers make significant investments to get an item onto a market and, and with advertising. And so once we get the product established, we've done our job. If it's some product is bad and we didn't check, they check and they switch for us and they make everything perfect. Rack, this rack, everything they make look good and clean and whatever we missing, they 
told us that oh, tell us to make order this one or if they have they bring it for us if they came here then whatever is missing they told us right uh, right away then we can make order then a customer sometime looking for that stuff but we don't know we don't have this product and they suggest us you don't have this product you should order this product then that's why they can help us very well with the iPad we'll be going totally paperless the reps will basically be able to use the iPad to communicate to the, to the store on planograms how the store should be set and also communicate back to us what the store conditions are. We'll be also be able to take photos of the work that they've accomplished so we can talk about new items, to talk about planograms. Many of the stores we sell to by doing pre-advanced surveys and commitment sheets and that will be an excellent tool for us to use to show what the product is that they're purchasing. The handheld re retail reporting device that we utilize enables us to communicate to the field force what the objectives are and also allows them to collect the data at store level, both distribution upon entry and exit, also competitive activity, rack compliance, including taking photos of racks to ensure compliance of, on contracts. And how do you do that with new products, convincing store owners that this is something they really ought to carry? We have meetings with our manufacturers quite often, especially when they have new items coming out, and they'll go through the, all the details with us. They'll even make the call with us to the major customers explaining to them the background, the research on the items, the plans for the item, how they're going to advertise. So it's, it's a collaborative effort between us and the manufacturer. We not only sell their products, but we market and merchandise their products. And merchandising their products is the key to our business. So over 75% of our employees are reps that cover the stores. So they're in the stores making sure the products that we represent are on the shelf where they're supposed to be, priced right, where they can try to get some secondary displays to enhance the sales of the products that we're responsible for. Here's an item called Go-Go Squeeze. It's an applesauce that's in a squeeze container. Perfect item for a kid's lunchbox. This product is the number one product in France. So when a new product comes into the country, significant investments have to be made. And then once the item's accepted, what our reps do is they come in and they'll cut the item onto the shelf according to the planogram. The planogram is positioned. This is a new, new innovation product, so we were able to attain favorable shelf positioning here because it is a new innovation. The account's excited about it. So our, our job would be to ensure that the product is there, cut in, what we call speed to market. Within you know, three, four weeks, get the product on the shelf from the first ship. Our convenience retail team covers over 30,000 retail outlets in all major cities across the U.S. The majority of the stores we cover are independently owned and operated. Since there is no centralized buying within independent retailers, our team needs to sell one store at a time. Face-to-face -face selling in these outlets create business relationships that allow us to influence their buying and merchandising decisions. Our reps focus on educating the retailer on the correct mix of core items and new items along with merchandising of the primary shelf and secondary rack locations. Our go-to-market strategy in the convenience class of trade includes utilizing cargo vans that enable our reps to carry product. Each van is routed into a designated territory on a set call frequency. Our goal is to gain immediate distribution by selling product directly from the van to the stores on all items that are not currently carried. We've been doing this a long time. We have very good relationships at all our accounts. I mean, me and my brothers and our management team and salespeople have been calling these accounts for you know, 10, 15, 20 years. So we have, they have a lot of continuity in what we do. We see a new product probably six to nine months before it actually hits the marketplace. We learn about the product, learn about its attributes and what, what they're trying to accomplish, and then we take that product to our accounts and try to sell it in. We're a cost-efficient way for them to go to market. To put a direct sales force on for these companies costs them a lot of money. So we take all our clients and we take all their strengths and we're one person. So we can go into our accounts and we represent multiple manufacturers to sell their products. We're at the checkout lane. It's the last place that the consumer comes to before they leave the store. This is a spot where we can capture some additional sales for the store. And looking at the category, traditionally there's a lot of candy and gum products up here, and this section is very important to a supermarket. Looking at the manufacturer's perspective, they want to get their products here and get the single sale made, the single serve sale made, and then hopefully the consumer will like the product and purchase the, the larger packs of product in the back of the store. What would you say is another growth area for this company? We feel we can grow tremendously into, the, into more food products, into health and beauty care, 
into general merchandise. We have the infrastructure in place. We have the people in the street. We have the headquarter coverage. We have the, the administrative staff. So we want to expand it to other categories that we don't currently do business in, that we know we're capable of. They all ha have certain responsibilities and it's a very good thing. Very unusual that a business goes to the third generation and I guess one of the factors in involvement is that they're so busy that they don't have time to, to get in each other's uh, way and they like what they're doing. I didn't ask them to come into the business, they could have done whatever they wanted but they decided that they wanted to come to the business and they've done a great job and they've taken the business to a much higher level than where I developed it and that's the way it should be. And there you are, a look at how the services of a broker like E.A. Berg & Sons contribute to the success of food merchants ranging from large supermarket chains to small independent stores like this. After all, they've been doing it for over 30 years and they are still going strong.